A good agents.md file can make a pretty substantial difference in the quality of AI coding output that you get. Let me show you an example. I've got this dashboard design in Figma that I want to convert to code. I'll export it using the builder.io plugin and then paste it here and say, add this as an app wide tab. So you'll see from the Figma design, the first thing the agent has to do is explore the code base. That's because we didn't give any instructions on where to find what. So for this really massive code base, for every new chat, it's got to start from scratch. And here's the result. At a glance, it's not bad. It's got our interactive chart. Styling generally looks right. Buttons are interactive. But let's go to the code. So I like it's pretty well structured with multiple components using our design system, but I'm seeing a few small but annoying issues. First, while we use Emotion CSS, we don't use it in this format. You could add another prompt clarifying this, but it's annoying to repeat yourself. We also usually use MobX for state. And while I really like that it used Apex charts like we do, it figured that out, it tried to match the design a little too perfectly, providing this big HTML string for the tooltip UI to try and match exactly what our designer gave us. But I'd much rather not do overrides like this and use what's out of the box, even if it's a little bit different. I noticed one other issue is that AI is assuming we're using a slightly different version of Material UI, and some of these styles won't work as expected. I can also see that it's mostly using our design tokens, but when I go and test in dark mode, I say, ooh, it missed a few spots. This is the type of stuff I would normally just tell the AI and it'll fix, but there's a much, much better way. An agents.md file, a file you add to your code, lets you add these critical clarifying rules so your AI output doesn't just look right, it more deeply is right every time. Let's go through my top tips for improving your AI coding outputs by adding a few key things to your agents.md file. Now, the first thing that's really nice about agents.md is that more and more tools are standardizing on respecting the agents.md file. So one of the simplest ways you can start approaching this is literally just listing the things that matter to you. You don't have to overthink this or get over fancy. For example, you could literally just say do and list bullets. Use MUI v3. Use Emotion CSS. Use MobX for state management. Use design tokens. Use Apex charts for charts. Maybe you have some don'ts. Don't hard code colors. Don't use divs. We have a component already. You can be as detailed as you want, and I'd encourage you to be as iterative as you like. Try prompts, look at what you like and don't like, and fill out the do's and don'ts accordingly. Now, there's a few other things I found can go a long way. One really annoying thing agents can do is try and run a full build of a huge project where it just wants to know if a specific file passes prettier or type check. The thing about agents is they know what file path they just updated. So they don't have to run a full build just to check that file. We can tell how to check and format specific files by path. You can say, use the above commands when possible to do a full build do yarn build app. Sometimes I like just telling the agents, run a build and fix everything until the build passes. Now, one thing we talked about too is having the agent having to refigure out the same things over and over. If we supply just a little bit of project structure, then it'll know where to go for things automatically and not have to re-investigate every time. Agents can explore and look up other files. So in a lot of cases, you can just point it to files like C app.tsx for our routes. Agents can do basic file searches by name. So I don't even need the full path. C app sidebar for our sidebar. Most components are in app components, whatever else you like. Again, the agent will figure it out if you don't supply it. We get faster responses if it just automatically knows where to look. Another big one I like to give it is explicit good and bad file examples. This is a large code base. And it's got plenty of examples of outdated patterns like using React class components. So let's be explicit and give it good and bad patterns. Void class-based components like it, admin.tsx. Instead, use functional components with hooks like projects.tsx. AI is great with examples. So if you have good examples of using your design system or state management or patterns like forms, being very explicit about the good patterns and what to replicate really helps. So when you ask for things like forms or dashboards or tables to be generated, make sure the AI knows well what patterns we want to do and maybe what we want to avoid. And remember, the key to all of this is trial and error. Run prompts, see what you like, append information to better guide the AI based on what you learn. Now, if you want help from AI to generate these rules, there's a couple of tools that might help. Claude Code has a really cool command for this called slash init that will scan your code base and generate a Claude.md file. You can just rename that from Claude.md to agents.md to support more tools. Now, what I have seen go wrong with this, though, is it's looking at your whole code base. And if only some of your code base is modern and some is more legacy, it's probably going to write a lot of rules reflecting the legacy parts. And so you're going to want to go in and refine what it generates for you. No tool can perfectly just replace the most important work, which is 
trial and error and appending new rules to make sure things get better. Another common challenge people have is they depend on an internal design system. That code probably comes from a separate package. You may or may not even have access to that code base. And so if you're trying to get AI to generate things using that design system, but it doesn't have thorough knowledge of it, your results may not be great. To solve for that, a builder rebuilt something called design system indexing. You run it in your design system. It finds all of the code examples and patterns and generates specific and LLM optimized instructions on how to use the design system correctly and can improve your results a lot. Now that we've got our new rules, let's go back to Figma, part the design, paste, tell it to add a new sidebar tab. Let's see how the results look. And there we go. This is looking much better. The select menus are correct. Styling's improved because it's not trying to do things that this version of the design system doesn't support. Looking at our tooltip, basically looks the same, but it's using what's out of the box, which is what I wanted. Let's test dark mode, much better. I love it. This is what I wanted. Looking at the code, I'm seeing us using the correct CSS format, correct design tokens, and no weird HTML tooltip overrides. We're using what's out of the box, and I like it. And all this took was clarifying a little bit of do's and don'ts and best practices. This is 36 lines of markdown, and I'm way happy with my results. And if I go and add more, like add a table of code accepted by user, I also know it's going to follow the right conventions and can breathe a sigh of relief. It's also not going to need to explore broad parts of the code base just to know what I want here. And now that code output I got was not only a lot faster, it's also a lot better. This is correct. Let's check dark mode. I love it. One other really cool bonus tip you can do is point the agent to other docs. For example, I like to point to API docs so that if I'm hooking up a new dashboard, the agent can automatically find the API docs and or source and know what requests to make and how to make them so they can hook up to real data from the start. Check out my full blog post for additional tips that can increase your AI agent coding output quality as well as design and UI quality. And let me know in the comments, what have you found that can work really well to add to your agents.md or rules files?